Hey, it's hash time with Nabuguzi Chwanaka, a forum where we, you and I have conversations on unraveling social constructs, discuss self-development in line with mental health, and a lot more about the millennial world around us. If you're not hearing this voice for the first time, welcome back to today's episode. To you who is hearing my voice for the first time, I welcome you to this podcast. So today is the 10th of October and that is World Mental Health Day. We keep raising awareness about mental health and everything that we need to know. And in this episode, I have a special guest, Bianzika Simon, talking about his experience with mental health, plus his song Boyekoi, which highlights a trivialized topic, men and mental health. Listen in. Today with that is Simon Peter V. Zika, audio recording artist. Is yes, that a word? Uh, recording artist. It's just it's just recording, recording artist. artist. Yes. At the audio recording artist. <laughs> That's okay. There <laughs> <laughs> was <Yeah, well>, still <laughs> audio. <laughs> Please introduce yourself to our listeners. Um, hi, um, being Zika Simon is my name. Yep. And uh, my stage name is Boomba. Mm-hmm. Boomba basically means clay in Luganda. Boomba. Why didn't I think of? Yeah. So basically, the You're name a corn came... artist. I'm not really. It's I just thought. That, yeah. <laughs> I, I I was thinking of Timon and Boomba. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> so like, like, like an very, African a very interesting thing. story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my best friend in secondary school was called Timothy. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so basically, you can say Timo and Boomba. <laughs> yeah, oh, but, wow. Okay. Yeah, that sounds hilarious. But anyway, um, yeah, that's just basically it. Um, Boomba means clay, which uh-huh. is, um, um, to me, it means a lot because uh, it's hard when glass breaks. Yeah? Uh-huh. It literally almost becomes useless after that. Mm. It's hard to put it back together. Right. But um, for clay, it's it's different because when when it breaks, you can literally wet it, and then and it will go back to it. soft, and then remold it. So Dude. so even when you're broken, you are still useful in a way that you can get a, become another vessel of sorts. You can be a pot. You can be a a nice vase on the table, a mm-hmm. flower vase, or you could be anything, man. Clay, yeah. You can be a you can be a um, is it called a sculpt? Like, yeah. yeah Molded? Like, yeah, you can be a sculpt, like a, a sculpture. Yeah. That's the word, sculpture. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> sculpt, I think sculpt, sculpt, sculpt is a verb. To sculpt, yes? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, you can be a sculpture. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can be sculpted. You can be. You could Are be you anything. recruiting people in your clan because I also want to be Boomba? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's where the Boomba comes from. That's it's like for me. It has a, deep, a deeper meaning for me. It's deep. Yeah. Because now I also want to be Boomba, man. Like <laughs> that's. R- Fun uh, fact: I actually want to change my name from Simon to Boomba, being like a Boomba, like um, legally. Wow. Like that, that will be later on. Yeah, because I'm also very big on. Pan Africanism. I don't know why I have the name Simon. So I still, I, I don't really fancy the name Simon. I actually feel better when you call me Bienzika yeah. or Bumba. Yeah, so. And Bienzika is meaningful. And now you're going to yes, be carrying yourself is. with yeah. two meaningful names. It is, yeah. Could it, what order would it be? Bumba, Bienzika, or Bienzika, Bumba. Bienzika, Bumba. Right. Yeah. Because now you're looking at being Zika. It's all possible. Things are, all things are possible. And then yes. you have Boomba. Yeah. I mean, it's still, it's, 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 it, it's still, I feel like it still drives to the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, all things are possible. And you're never really broken. You can always, you're always useful somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's, yeah, my name's a very, very, being Zika was given to me by my mom. Yeah. Um, uh, before that, I had my dad's names. Oh, uh, okay. As, I went in Tanda Simon Peter, Simon Peter and Tanda Musisi, which um, I, I didn't fancy that much. I did oh, not yeah. have any connection to my my father's side, so mm. uh, I, I just didn't fancy the names because I didn't um, I didn't really, really feel like the, the, yeah them. I didn't identify with the name, so mm. I, I scraped it off. 
okay. and, and did, uh, decided to go with the name my mom gave me, the mm-hmm. musical. Yeah. What did you want to be while growing up? So funny thing is, um, I grew up in Entebbe. Mm-hmm. So you can guess every, every kid in Entebbe, yeah, every kid in Entebbe almost wanted to be a pilot at some point. Is it? Uh, almost. That what was mean, rare but... to hear. People were just talking about doctor, doctor, and uh, I don't know what other things. Very many kids about. who grew up in Entebbe fancied airplanes, so they yeah. wanted to be pilots at some point. I think, uh, but yeah, I wanted to be a pilot at some point. Then I realized, um, not for me. But <laughs> I actually enjoyed physics, which was very interesting. Um, so that's now, as far as when is it just all the wars or still at eleven? Um, even like even like when I was still like in primary, um, I didn't know it was physics, but I was fans. Like I fancied like I, I, I like it was intri- intrigued me like gravity and you knew pulleys. gravity. In yeah, primary, like, yeah, but like those things were there. We not, they're not like at that age? in their simplest form. Yeah, because you'd see them in books and stuff. Like so, it was in their simplest form. It wasn't like the complicated gravity, and then, mm. but yeah, it was in their simplest forms, not with the uh, Newton's laws and what not. No, we yeah, it <laughs> yeah. was in their simplest forms. But you see, like we had simple, simple like in science, there was pulleys and stuff like that. Like all that stuff was there. I don't know the magnets. I think it's yeah, the mag- magnets, magnets that we made and then in there was primary. Pulleys. No, there was pulleys in my primary. What is pulleys? Uh, like mechanisms, um, the effort, load, and the pivot. Oh, that cut seesaw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seesaw. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, those, <laughs> those, those things, yeah. Is so, it called a pulley? Uh, no, there's that. There was that. There was the effort, load, and then there was the pulley thing. Because also that also had the same thing: effort, load, and pivot. That the same thing. There was a pulley. Wasn't that a seesaw? The, there's a, the the thing that looked like a seesaw was the one that had like that triangle thing. Yeah, the pivot. Yes, the pivot. Yeah. Now the pulley had a round pivot where like there's a pulling and then there's a load going up and there's the, the effort coming down so there's that pivot wow. yeah so yeah it was part of all that um, yeah so that's things fun i i, I fancied them uh-huh. and um f- f- uh, i also fancied music because i grew up around a lot of musicians um i grew mm-hmm. up uh, around a pastor <laughs> so i almost was like a pastor's child uh, my godfather was a pastor yeah at a at a church called EPC, mm-hmm. Mr. Timothy Chibirige. Um yeah. So, oh man, watching him play his guitar, and he was left-handed. I'm um, left-handed too. Uh-huh. So that like we had like that Makes connection. It easier. Um, we used to him and he almost took over a dad, dad role at some point because we used to watch the car together yeah. and stuff like that, you know. And so, I fancied music a lot, but I was also very, very introverted when I was a child. Um, mm-hmm. I did not know how to express myself much, so I think I, I, I couldn't ask people to teach me yeah. to do certain things. And then I remember I wrote this, like, I think I was like primary six or something, and I wrote this like weird, very small song, I'll never know, I'll never know. And you're singing it. it so I went to church and sang it, it was terrible. It didn't go well. It was terrible. So you, I, you, I flattered. You, I sang like in three different kids at the same time. <laughs> I flattered. I was like, man, this is so horrible. You did it for the congregation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Who funny pushed thing is, you to do that? Were no, you ready? I, had, I, was a very, I, I was like a star child when I was a kid, yeah? I had like yeah. this very good memory. So I'd like recite memory verses. Mm. Um, like a whole psalm from like beginning to end. Yeah. So like I would go in front. Like they would take me in front of church to do that. And yeah. Then, yeah. I really won a lot of gifts for that. Like I was like a... Church favorite, uh, school favorite because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I would recite those and yeah, it was really cool. So the same was like, instead of reciting a verse, I want to go and just sing, which didn't really work out. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was disastrous. And then I remember this girl I really liked, she was called Tracy, I think. And when, okay, because now we're still talking about, are we still in primary at this yeah, time? Yeah, but anyway, but yeah, that's just the, like, it was just the music thing. That um, I fancied after some time because I really liked also writing. My mom was a teacher of English, mm-hmm. so songwriting came in through that because I I, I liked reading a lot and I yeah, liked write, yeah, writing yeah. poems and stuff like that. Mm. And yeah, I picked up the songwriting, and then now here I am. I went to music school. You did? Yeah. Okay. Which so music school I was doing as as um, as majoring in um, as majoring in production. Which is basically sound engineering is basically like physics. Well, so like you're, you're dealing with waves, you're dealing with frequencies, you're dealing. So it's basically physics and music. sound and music. So it's like the two of my favorite things came together. That's how two of my favorite things came together. Oh in yeah. Music school. yeah, yeah, yeah. Music school. I mean, <laughs> yeah. When you talk about music school and what, did you do it from here? Yeah, um, there's a school called Africa Institute of Music. It's along Entebbe Road. Ah. Uh, yeah. 
because it's not it's not really common to hear people talking about how they went to music school. It's a very long story how I ended up there. I had to go through the all the other things as for S six and then university. Yeah, I did of course I didn't really fancy, and then I, I told my mom, you know what, I still want to do my music, so I went to music school. And that's how you went to the yeah. music school. Yeah. How has Absolutely. it been pursuing music? It has been challenging because um, you have like. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's not much money there, so it's usually mm-hmm. just the passion that drives you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, it's been it's been a journey and a half. Journey and a half. Yeah, You're still and now moving. I'm recording my very first album after very many years. Very many years is how many years? Yeah, man, the songs on my album that I wrote in what twenty two thousand nine. Whoa, yeah. that's and 11 then, years down the road. Yeah, and then now they're on my album, my first album. Is it? Does it go on like a book whereby you keep editing? Maybe you can look at something? Fun fact, I always never really write down. I always keep things in my head a lot. When I write oh. them down, they get lost. I'm, I, I, I am very disorganized and I lose, a lot, I lose a, th- a lot of things. Yeah. So when I write them down, they tend to get lost. So usually... You write in your head? Yeah, most times they, I keep them more in my head. That on book. Amazing. I have a better memory then. That keeps a lot. My short term memory is messed up, but my long term memory is really, really good. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you're talking about the release of your first album. And there is just one particular song I think that you're going to be releasing tomorrow. Yes. Um, yes. 10th, 10th September. Yes. 10th. No, October. 10th October, ah. my bad. 10th October. <laughs> yes, um, Buyikwe. Yes. Tell us about Buyikwe. I wish I had some. Th- okay, I think. Do we play it at the end? Yeah, sure. You, you, are you, I could play it for you at the end. Yeah. Um, uh, you, could, you guys could be the first people to listen to it, probably, or something. <laughs> um, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, so, Buyikwe is basically a song. Um, it's a very disturbing song. It's not a very. It on, at the surface it looks like a very nice love song of someone, of some guy who misses his his love interest. Yeah. Who is far away. Buikwe, I think you know Buikwe. Buikwe is like a place along Ginger Road. But it's actually really deep inside. I <laughs> so just hear there, about it actually. There is like quite a bit remote. So. Mm. So You've been just there? imagine someone. Uh, yeah, I've been there a bit of a, a, a few times, but. Mm-hmm. Just imagine, like, it was just like the distance thing. It's just like to show distance. Like, I mean, imagine you're traveling from Kampala to Buikwe every day. Oh, that's, yeah, that's not yeah, practical. Yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah. literally like a long-distance relationship of sorts. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's just like a metaphor for distance, a lot of distance. Like Yeah. So, yeah, the song, um, that on the surface, it just looks like a song, a, a love song, like, like a normal love song. But um, when you actually listen to the lyrics yeah. properly then you realize it's very disturbing mm. because this person who this guy who misses this woman yeah is in a place where he cannot communicate he does not know how to communicate he's not mentally well enough to communicate healthily yeah so he knows that the girl loves him okay and he really loves the girl back okay but there's times when he actually ghosts her and he just disappears on her and she's tired of all this. Like, he, mm-hmm. he knows that she's tired. Yeah. But he doesn't know how to tell her that and he's quiet and he has all these things he writes down to explain these things to her. Mm-hmm. But then in the end, he's like, screw it, it's not worth it. And then he burns the letter that he wrote oh. her. And then, and then, but then he's all in pain. Like, when he's doing these things, it's actually in pain. Okay. And he's just scared that if she sees his skeletons, then... She may really, really, really freak out and just like it, he's just scared of her reaction when he see, when if if she ever sees um, the skeletons in his closet. So mm. it's a very scary a song about being afraid. Yeah. A song about mental health. <laughs> a lot mm-hmm. of yeah, because his his um, um, PTSD is not a very nice thing to to be suffering from. Yeah, it, like um, yeah, it, we know in Uganda, man, like. I think uh, it has been of recent that mental health has come to the forefront. But before this, uh, there hasn't been yeah. much talk about mental health. Yeah. So um, I feel that everything works in its own time, in its perfect timing. Mm-hmm. So my album is rotates so much around mental health, um, different 
mental illnesses. Um, so it's not just Buyiko on, not it, just on Buyiko. the album. Like the whole album has like an element of like weird because uh, one of the songs is called Stranger. Mm-hmm. There is um, skydiving. There is. Um, oh, so I, I imagine skydiving is a little bit disturbing. Yeah, um, yeah, skydiving with no parachute. That's the song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of other song, songs on there that yeah. On the surface, they look like normal, uh, you know, happy, feel-good songs or sad songs or heartbreak songs. But yeah. there's a lot of mental health involved in there. Yeah. So yeah, that's Buyekwe. Um, yeah. Uh, All right. You talked about the guy who cannot really communicate. Yeah. And uh, he's afraid that if he opens up his skeleton to this woman, mm. the woman will be afraid. Yeah. Is this a culture that you have seen or experienced in our society, especially in regards to the men? Ah, uh, man, uh, there's, a, there's a lot I can say about that. So, yeah. First of all, um, like even when, even with all this um, feminism going on and mm-hmm. women emancipation and everything else, you would think people would be progressive enough. Yeah. Or be educated enough, mm-hmm. but apparently not. Um, even with all that going on, it's, um, there's a lot of people who still think uh, crying is not very manly. Yeah. There's um, there's people who still think um, people like think about like think a lot of things about men like. Um, it's very rare it's for a man to, be to exactly. Of some you, kind. You're supposed to be like strong, you know, macho. Ooh, Mister Fix It All, you know. I think um, it's okay to be strong, but yeah, in but a humanly saying, way. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. it's okay to be. Str- it's actually a good thing to be strong, but yeah, you cannot be strong all the time. Mm-hmm. It's okay not to be okay sometimes. Yeah, um, and there's no shame in that. Mm-hmm. But um, apparently, people do not think the same way, um, and so. You know, being a man who is not um, personally, I've, I've I've struggled with uh, clinical depression. I, I was diagnosed with clinical depression okay. a while back, but I've, I've struggled with depression for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Where I have like these long long bouts of just staying alone in my room and I don't want to see anyone. Yeah, I'm just numb, and uh, it's hard to talk about it because people do not understand it. Okay, not it's even hard for your own relatives to understand mm. even the people who are close to you so I, I don't know sometimes I feel like strangers understand us better than the relatives ever do actually sometimes it is true yeah because um, I, 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 my mom used to call it laziness like um, mm. you know um, poverty is knocking on your door she did like but I do not blame her because I do not I did not talk to much about it probably if I had talked about it probably she would understand it I do not know no you know it's, um, it's not it's it's a little bit a confusing state yeah. because even if you had talked about it would she understand it was even funny because I did not know what was going on with me exactly. in, in the first place at yeah. some point so yeah me I thought I was just a, a broken thing that just like yeah you felt lost I, I, felt, I, I felt I felt so much for like the longest time I felt like a failure in life. Yeah, because yeah, of yeah, it. yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and I tried, I think at some point I tried uh, seeing a therapist and it didn't work out. I have recently just, only recently just uh, since seeing a male therapist who's trying out something mm. that's new called EMDR and it's actually working. Okay. Although it's very exhausting. Every time I go in, I come out and I feel like I've been drained for a thousand years. You say it's but, um, MDR? EMDR. EMDR. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of the therapies that uh, were introduced, I think, about 15 years ago. Okay. That helped someone uh, deal with PTSD and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, that's basically it. Um, it's hard being in that space because um, not very many people understand you. Yeah. And then, uh, and you get to the song, um, peop- uh, people think they want to understand you. People think, but it's because they have built up this image in their head mm-hmm. about you. Mm-hmm. So they say, it's okay to open up. It's okay, I'm here for you. Yeah. And then the moment you do that, then you freak them out and then they disappear. They could literally leave you there hanging. I saw, I saw a quote 
somewhere. I yeah. don't know where. I don't know when I saw it. Yeah. But I, the thing just stuck in my head. Yeah. Uh, it was like people want to be there. F- people want to say they want to be there for you. Yeah only when it is comfortable for them. Yes, exactly. So the moment it becomes rocky yes, for them, they just And then it freaks disappear. them out. And, then, yeah. and in, in a way, I don't blame them, but mm-hmm. I also learned that we are human. And um, I've learned the hard way that it's not... Uh, yeah, like, it's not... Um, it's... Yeah, you should, you should just be wise about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Speaking of therapy, yeah. How did you end? Because you've talked about your experience with mental health. Yeah. How did you get to a space whereby you realized you want you needed therapy? Because I feel like these are not things that are really known to us. Because yeah. I was taken to a, I was taken to a psychologist mm. when I was in S four. Yeah. But I didn't know why I was there. I wasn't told mm. why I was seeing a psychologist. And then mm. I, it just dawned on me. I knew she was a psychologist. I was talking to her. Mm. But they, I wasn't given a reason mm. as to why I was speaking with her. And still nothing was resolved because I was suppressing stuff. I didn't mm. open up to her because I didn't know why I was talking to her anyway. I thought True. she was just us talking. Yeah. Therapy. How did you get to a place whereby you felt, was it your personal initiative that you realized you needed to see a therapist? Not at all, not at all. Um, So, (laughs) this is a hard topic to talk about, but anyway, Mm. um, since we're here now, we might as well. Um, So, earlier this year, um, I had a lot going on. Um, I had, I was struggling with my work. Yeah. Um, this brings me to my other thing, mental health in the workspace. Mm-hmm. In Uganda, man, that's like a very hard thing. Yeah. People expect you to be okay. Like um, like you'd think um, when you're not okay, when you're not physically okay, when you cannot go into work, you ask for a sick leave or something, right? Yes, yes, So they yes. give you a few days off to recover. Yeah. But why can that be the same for mental health? They don't know. <laughs> it's because hard to explain to them, exactly I imagine. That's what I'm saying, like, that's what I'm saying, like that's how toxic our, our workspaces are, that You're people so are slowly dying, yeah. but because it's always driven by results, 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 and you're not mm-hmm. finding out how are the people that... It's only physical that they, the people think about, but they don't think about the mental space. And yet yeah. that is like literally your computer up there. Mm-hmm. It's how that runs the whole system. So if it's not okay, then nothing is okay. So I was in this space where I was, I was, I was, I was working somewhere, yeah, and this place was... It was it was a very challenging place to be in, mm. because on top of not really caring about mental health, um, physical health. I was every day that I missed when I was not when I was unwell. If I if I was supposed to go to hospital, or I, was, I had malaria and, and I, I couldn't make it to work, yeah, my salary would be cut. Is it? Yeah. So you just imagine if if even your physical health is not really. Um, I think, Put into consideration. Yeah, so just imagine what about mental health? So it was a very challenging space to be in. Yeah. And I was struggling with that. And then as I was struggling with that, then came COVID and oh. everything shut down. Then there was like a lockdown. Yeah. And then it just it just fed my depression. It just fed my depression. So mm-hmm. I did not even have to, have to struggle to be alone. I was alone most of the time. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I remember I was like, you know what, I'm just tired of this. Um, I want to, what if like, I just don't feel anything after this? Yeah. If I, if I died, I wouldn't feel anything after that. So I overdosed on pills. And yeah. I was like, yeah, this is it, I want to die. Mm. And then it didn't work, funny enough, it didn't work. Yeah. Um, backstory to that, I've used a lot of medication. So somehow I think my body has adapted to a lot of medication. Mm-hmm. So it didn't work as I expected it to work. So I survived that. But a few days after that, I started, um, like I woke up in the middle of the night and I was puking and I was doing all these things. I was like, yeah, this is the time I'm going. But in my head, well, I was, was thinking. Could, could it have been your body reacting? Yes. To no, I think it, had, like, it took a while to like, react to the medicine and everything. Oh. So, yeah, like, so in that, in that moment, I thought, yeah, this is it. I'm going. So, but I didn't want people to think 
you know, like there's always conspiracies around it, like yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they poisoned him, mm. or you know. So I, I just wanted to make it clear. So I put it, I, I put it out on post just in case. Um, I'm dead by the end of the night. This and this and this and this is happening, and then I think a few people freaked out. Yeah, and I think one of my pastors uh, sent it to someone who was in the mental health space. Mm-hmm. Well. In the, at, by the end, like by the end of the night, I think in the morning, I think I'd picked out most of it. I think I I don't know, but I was not that as bad as I was in the night. Yeah. So actually, like around five a.m., I think I deleted the post. But I think a lot of people are already seen it. It's weird how many people are awake in the, the night of the, the post? night. Where was the post? Was it? So it was on Facebook. Um, so it was weird how many people were awake around that time because people saw it. As I was very shocked. Um, but so yeah, the it went around. So um, in the morning, they sent an ambulance to pick me up. Oh, someone just sent the ambulance. Yeah, so an ambulance okay. came to pick me up in the morning. Mm. I met um, this amazing lady called Tina. Yeah. And um, she's now my current boss. <laughs> she's now she, your current boss. Um, yeah, uh, long story short, um, there was a lot going on. Um, um, she helped me get back on my feet. Yeah. She checked me in to, to get um, medication, antidepressants and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then... Like she literally saw to it that I was getting the help that I needed. Yeah. Um, um, if, like uh, she literally like was my mother for a bit. She's she's still like a mother figure right now. That and was was she was in the ambulance or no, you she, were driven to her? I told you like uh, it went around like my pastor sent it to someone who was in a mental health space. Oh. So she's the one that sent um, the Limia to pick me up. Yeah. Okay. The ambulance company. Mm. Uh, yeah. So so she's the one that literally followed up she was like okay so you've been to uh, so they took me to Butabika Rifaro mm-hmm. and then I went to the OPD outpatients department they gave yes. me medication yeah. I, I, they gave me a psychiatrist to see and then they discharged they, they, they wanted me to stay I think the night but I was like you know what I'm not staying here mm-hmm. so it's depressing as it is so so they I came give back you home. Yeah, an they option. Give. They don't just take you because I I have I don't I have I, this I think it depends on how much uh, how, how severe it is. If it's if they think you're going to try to kill yourself again, then I, I don't think they want to leave you alone. Yeah, they want to keep you under observation mm. for a while. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I have a way around people, so I convinced them to let me go. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I ended up back home. But then um, Tina kept following up, and then uh, she gave me my. My next job, where I was, uh, which was in the mental health space. Yeah, yeah, ironically, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I became her personal assistant for a while, and then, yeah, still, yeah, work for her in other ways, um, data collection, stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I help her out with. So, yeah, she, so right now she's like, um, she has a company called Malakite Consulting. Okay. So Malakite actually. Um, Executive produced the album. Is it produce, executive producer to the album? Mm. Um, yeah, because they care a lot about mental health. That's the space they're in. So yeah, 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 yeah. it was something that yeah, um, yeah. So that's how uh, I am here now, recording the album and you know, uh, getting better. Yeah. By by the day. Yeah. I was asking, I had asked about how you got, to, was it, is this the first time this year that you got to see a professional? Uh, this was the first time, I've seen someone before, but I, it didn't really help, so I stopped going anyway. But I think this is the time when it's been intentional with someone actually following up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, did you go today? Did you, which place are you in? Are you at a four? Are you at a five? Are you at a one? Yeah. At the scale, on the scale, like if you're at a five, then it's really bad. That means you have, like they can literally have to come and pick you up. Yeah. Um, if it's a one, that means you're in a good place. Or a zero, that means you have no burden at all and you're like in a really happy place. Oh, zero? Yeah, zero is it's like, a, really, it's like a, bad, a burden scale. So if you have one, then you have like a, a bit of burden. Two is a bit more burden. Oh, it's Three, a burden scale. Yeah, like I was burden just looking compared at to kids. mental health. Yeah, okay. in regards to mental health. Like what's, like what's the burden you're trying, you're, you, can carry, like you're, you think you're carrying right now? Oh. So if it's really, really bad and you feel like you want to end your life, it's mostly at around five. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. So there's a scale. So... Yeah, she always like you know what? How what are you feeling? Give me a number right now, because she knows that you probably don't want to talk about it. So the numbers help. You just have to give her just a number, oh. or at one, or two, or three, or That's four. That's like or codified five. language. Yeah, and I think like, yeah. it makes it easier it makes for it easier the person than to, to explain communicate. Yourself. Yes, it does. Sometimes words fail. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Because now when you talk about the very first therapist that you had and it didn't work out. Yeah. Was it after a diagnosis? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There's I feel a diagnosis. like it's, yes. it's so you went to they, see a they, doctor. Yeah, they, and give you, they, they give you a bit of questionnaires to fill out and mm. they talk to you about stuff. They ask you a bit of questions here and there, then they find out what's going on. And then um, <laughs> um, you have to be really open because if you're not really open, then they can actually misdiagnose you. Oh. So you have to be really open about stuff, which is a bit hard. It's it's quite a bit difficult place to be. Yes, it can be annoying because you can ask a, a, the same question over and over again mm-hmm. in different ways, and then you feel like. But I've said this a lot of times, so, and so I, it really it was just challenging because I feel at some point I was very and un, 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 annoyed and very angry. Yeah, and very irritated. Yeah, I get easily irritated with things like that. So, mm. yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, that's how I ended up here trying to receive help. Um, also, it hasn't been easy. Because they've changed out a few people, and then they've recommended other few people. So, in the end, they recommended um, a, 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 a therapist who's who's who was situated on uh, the surgery. So mm-hmm. that's where I go. Um, yeah, weekly. So weekly basis. Yeah. Okay. So tomorrow we have a mental health day. Yeah. The tenth of October, and this yeah. is when your album is coming out. No, my first song on the album. Oh right! Yeah, oh, not the whole album. Not the whole album. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow, I think it's just the album itself is Boyukwe. No, the album itself is called Lost ID. Lost. Oh wow. Yeah, Lost ID. Um, uh, I feel like it's a very big topic. If I wanted to do it right now, we would not finish now. So I can't yeah, but it's, it has to do a lot with identity, mental yes, health. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, because I mean, if you do not know who you are, then it can actually affect your mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of things that uh, have not uh, not that it can. It really hurts your it, mental yeah, health. It really does, yeah, because yeah. You do not, you're lost. Literally, you're lost. You can't identify yourself, yeah. and you can't even figure out what it is that is wrong or right. With Picture you. this: um, the generation have gone in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who in school we've been totally caned for speaking vernacular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then now you grow up, and then people ridicule you because you do not, you cannot speak your mother tongue. Oh dear! Yeah, so you're stuck in the balance there, um, where like you're thinking like, what the heck am I supposed to do now? Um, yeah. This is like there's, you're stuck in that weird place where you do not know what to identify with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's very strange. Yeah. I mean, I had a moment time. where I had to write to the prefects. <laughs> they were going to report me to the HM. Wow. Wow. So I had to promise the prefect that I wasn't going to speak Luganda again. Man. But of course it wasn't going to work. Well, right? um, it's, it's, it was a very strange thing to be. Uh, man. Uh, it was we, very... we, we really keep losing ourselves to yeah. people's demands. Or com- the particular, every community that we go to, we yeah. somehow become a sponge of that yeah, community. Yeah, exactly true. And then you move your sponge to somewhere else that it's not you, where yeah. your, abs- your absorption is not. Yeah. And then now you have to take on something yeah. else. Yeah. So that, I that very can much very understand. Challenging to your mental health. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah all those topics are um, talked about when in the album. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also oppression from different places. Um, the leaders we have are probably like. Oh yeah. Um, the governance. Yeah, like different things that happen. Um, it could be your landlord. Mm-hmm. It could be like, but there's like oppression from every place. Um, yeah, like people in a high place. It could be your boss, actually. Yeah. Being your oppressor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in the album, but it's all directed towards mental health in the end. I was just talking to someone when I was on my way here, and yeah. uh, I, I, I say something like, yeah. we... The, the the many things that Ugandans are doing that are wrong, yeah. there's a very high chance that people are sick because of the oppression there, true. or the disappointments they're yeah, dis, they're experiencing from governance. True. And then you go, and then we, so we have a culture of suppression. Yeah. They keep telling you suck it up. Yeah. True. Or you want to complain about something, they say that is very small. Someone else is doing this. Yeah. So we we really encourage a culture of suppression. True. So yeah. people are forced to be in a space whereby they are supposed to pretend that they are happy. Mm-hmm. You see, Ugandans are really funny on social media, mm-hmm. but I think they're just finding humor to cover up what's really happening. Because you, you even get to see whereby Kawesi died. 
And then there was a Kawesi challenge. I was like, are you serious? Man, that stuff um, sometimes sickens me to the stomach. Yeah. And then... And then sometimes you have to like ignore it because if you keep on like taking it in, it can really yes. be bad for your mental health. It becomes a personal oh, man. struggle. Oh man, it can be very terrible for you. So like there's, there's things you see and then you're like, no, not today, Satan. I will <laughs> yeah. not take that on. Like, but then, man, there's a lot of stuff that affects you. Like the things you see. By the time someone like a border border man decides to light themselves on fire, mm-hmm. like that's like things are not They've fine. Like, to the like end. it's like yeah, like I'm literally like, what the heck is going on? Like. Man, people are tired. By the time someone literally undresses in public, oh yeah, and says, "I'm like, it's, I'm tired," I'm t- like, like you cannot do that on a normal day. Mm-hmm. It is under so much oppression that someone can do that, and they're like, you know what, I'm tired. Like, what, come watch me. Like, if this is a, if this is the one I want to be hard, let let me be hard. At yeah. least, yeah, it's it's very it's very disturbing. Yeah. What message would you have for our listeners on mental health? Um, I just want to say something, mm-hmm. man. Whatever you are, woman, man, child, it is okay not to be okay sometimes. Yeah, it is okay not to be okay sometimes. So take a deep breath. Um, do not feel pressured to do anything. Yeah. Take a break. Always take a break for yourself. Um, it's very amazing how what um, breaks can do for your mental health. Um, just the the break from everything. Um, if you can if you can afford it, go away for something. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can't, then it's okay. But take some time off for yourself. Um, yeah. And and if you really want to talk to someone, if you're struggling with something, please talk to someone. Um, um, Strong Minds Uganda, in uh, in partnership with um, Menstrual Health, mm-hmm. have a have a call line. Uh, you, you you can actually dial star two five two star ten hash. Right now, start two, two five, five two, two, start ten hash. Start ten hash. Yeah. Okay. Is that and on all networks? Yeah, on all networks. Uh, it's free on Africel and MTN. Okay. But apparently, Airtel carries a small fee, like a mess. I think like for a message or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not that big of a fee, but yeah, it's like trust me, someone you register yourself, and then someone will call you back in a bit. You know, oh, you just dial it and the person calls you. And register you? yourself, yeah. Like they ask, yeah, register yourself. Um, not you don't put there your name exactly. Yeah. But like, just like, like yeah, like um, I think just ad- identifiers, and then they'll call you back. They'll find out how to reach reach you, and then if you just say your num your number, they'll call it. Oh, that's on registered numbers. No, basically they just. Oh, the moment you they ask dial you questions, the like cord. Star, yeah, start two five two start ten hash. They ask mm-hmm. you a few things. A prom- they give you a few prompts. Oh. Go through the prompts. Yeah. Uh, register. Mm. Uh, it may take them a day or two, but they'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah, because. Oh, um, so it's not on the instant. Uh, <laughs> I imagine it's, it's um, on I think instant. there's a bit of a bit of um, a lot of people registering at the same time, so it may not be as instant as yeah, because um, I mean, they also have. Um, they don't have that. Uh, it's it's yeah. It's like I mean, if you have like ten thousand people signing up or one thousand mm. people signing up, and then you have like probably like thirty people responding to the call lines, it might be yeah, a bit challenging. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, like they get back to you at some point, uh, and, and yeah, sooner or later they get back to you. So uh, just please sign uh, sign up, and you know, someone will call you. Okay. Someone will call you, and yeah, you don't have to go through this alone. Um, you can talk to someone. Someone you trust. Yeah, you know sometimes it's actually easier to talk to strangers about things because you know, yeah. you know, and you know it's now easier because if they're calling you on phone, then they don't have to see you. Mm-hmm. You do not have to see them. They just talk to someone on phone, and you're like, let it, let me let and, it out. And like, they may never know how you even. They look do, that's like. what I'm saying. Like they don't know you, you don't know them. They can let it because it's hard to confide in someone you know because now are you like, how will they see me after this? Yeah. Or it's, it's quite a challenging thing when you, you know someone, but I feel like. To me, it's easier when you don't even know someone and you're talking to them over the phone. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to meet them. You do not have to what, and then, you know, you get the help that you need. Wow. Yeah. So they is, is it more like a counselling thing? Yes, there's counselling on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you feel like it doesn't work for you, trust me, Uganda has one of the best mental health facilities in 
Africa, if you didn't know that. Are you serious? Yeah. Uganda. Uh, Butabika River is a very beautiful place. It's not when people look when people imagine Butabika, they imagine all this crazy stuff going on, or probably people are. Like, I think they just like imagine people jacket. on the streets. Uh, yeah, like, but no, um, it's actually a very, uh, very, very good place to go to. You can get the help you need for free. For f- they would not charge you a single coin. You literally are go to the operations department. Uh, or like the reception and asks for someone trust me they'll they'll find someone they'll find a, a psychiatrist for you okay you'll get the help you need all the medicine there is free all the medicine i got from butarika referral was free of charge Are i you didn't serious? pay a single coin for it yeah i didn't pay a single all coin this for it. information is known out there in the yeah, public trust me um, i think it's because the place has been uh, what's the word um, stigmatized yes yes, yeah, yes, yes, stigma yes, around. yes yeah but it's a very uh, so they have good facilities trust me wow. um, yeah they have good facilities they'll um, it, you may find a big a longer line but if you go yeah but if you go through oh, there then, is also such thing as finding long lines yeah because I mean people are trying to help get help so yeah people are trying to get help yeah so there's that but then trust me um, yeah you'll get the help you need at no cost amazing unless you want to sign into the private ward Oh, there is. But then there's the if, if you're checking and in, and then yeah, like but but if you're not signing into the private one, then you don't have to pay a single coin. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. I didn't know yeah. about that. <laughs> so I, I feel like people shouldn't be shouldn't be scared or feel intimidated to actually go there. Mm-hmm. It's actually not a very bad place to be. It's a yeah. I went there. I got the help. I got I got help from there. So I I would recommend it. By the time I recommend it, I actually also had the same stigma around Butarika. Yes. Until I went there and then I went to this process and I was like, oh, okay, this is what happens. And I actually feel like people would be scared of going there because they feel like, no, I am okay. Yeah. They want to convince themselves that they're okay. They have not got into that space whereby it leads them to hospitalization Mm -hmm. or anything related to hospital and medicine. Yeah. Uh, You talked about this code. I didn't mm. grasp it in my head. I think I need to learn how okay, to recite. Okay, I, I think I can Is say it, it a few more times. Yeah. Star. Okay. Two five two. Star two five two. Star. Star. Two ten, hash. Then hash. I think that's easy. Star two five two. Star, star ten hash. Ten hash. Yeah. Is that an organization handling? Yes, yeah, strong minds Uganda. Strong minds Uganda. Yeah. How is there any other way that they can be approached? Um, they have uh, Beyond the offices the in, in Mukoto. Okay. Um, uh, it's hard directing you, but if you reach the market, uh, okay, that's very hard. Uh, it's complicated <laughs> directing you. But if you yeah. googled it, like if you googled the pin, On the maps. yeah, you could actually get directions to the, to the place. Okay. Strong Minds Uganda. Um, social media. If you look, to, yeah, I think even on uh, Facebook you could find them. You could even find their numbers on social media. Just type in Strong Minds Uganda, and I think you'll find them. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation and raising awareness on mental health. Thank you for having me. Uh, where can people find you? Oh, Boomba UG. Um, yeah. I have a Facebook page, Boomba UG. Okay. Um, just look for B U M B A U G. Yeah. That's on Facebook. Um, that cool icon. Is that is that your official logo? Yes, that's my my logo. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, then um, on Twitter, same thing, Boomba underscore UG. Okay. And then uh, same thing for uh, for Instagram, Boomba underscore UG. Okay. Yeah. And uh, YouTube. YouTube, yes, YouTube, Boomba UG, still Boomba because UG. Because people need to watch yeah. the... Um, yeah, I have a bit of content on the, on the channel, but um, most interesting things are going on now. Yeah. Since the album is coming to fruition, mm-hmm. so yeah, uh, go and subscribe, share, like. Yes. Um, Boom because, by UG. Because I want to, I want, I want the listeners to know where they can find the song. Boy yeah, Boy. Uh, the song week is actually going to be up tonight, uh, midnight, exactly midnight, tenth October. Okay. Yeah, zero hours. Mm. Yeah. It will be up on uh, the official audio will be up. Okay. On the. Yeah, on 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 the on the YouTube page, so you could go check it. it out. It's amazing. Uh, it's cool music, though. It's a uh, some stuff you hear every day. So yeah, just go <laughs> listen to that cool music, and you know, uh, let me know how it speaks to you. Give feedback. Yeah, sure. Thank Leave you a so comment. much. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for being with us. Thank you for having me.
You're welcome. Shout out to B. Inzika for joining me on this World Mental Health Day. Like he said, it is okay not to be okay. Seek help in times of crisis. Find someone to talk to. On the part of men and mental health, let's not suppress men's emotional needs in the name of being man enough. Whatever dogma you subscribe to, Christianity or humanity or any other, whatever you subscribe to, there is not a provision that denies men of emotional expression. If you have found this episode very informative and helpful, do not forget to share. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button so that you do not miss out on any episode. And also make sure that you follow the show on Facebook and Instagram. It's all hash time with Navguzi Chwanuka. Then on Twitter, it is at HTNK podcast. HTNK is all caps lock and then podcast is in lower case. Today we are signing out with our guest song, Boyikwe. Ciao. I wrote you a letter. Tore it up and burned it to ashes. A tear escapes the corner of my left eye. Slowly trickles to my lips All these dry bones, dry bones Elijah, won't you save me? Hey, we quit jolly Do you think of me? When you're sad and Where